What is acceleration? Um, I'm sure that's something that you've been asking yourself. So just like we can talk about how the position changes with time, and that's the velocity, the acceleration is how the velocity changes with time. So let's say I'm in my car and I'm traveling um, uh, down the road. Uh, I've hit a stop sign, so I stop and my initial velocity is zero meters per second. And then um, the, the, the light turns green or I start going again and I'm gonna hit the gas and I'm gonna speed up. And so my velocity will get faster and faster and faster as time goes on until I reach some um, constant speed which is always the speed limit. Um, how my velocity changes over time that's the acceleration. So if, I, if my acceleration is, let's say, um, let's say two meters per second, if my initial velocity is zero, then one second later, my velocity will be two meters per second. And one more second later, it'll be four meters per second. And another second later, it'll be six meters per second. And another second later, it'll be eight meters per second. This idea of it, my velocity changes two meters per second every second or two meters per second per second. So this idea that my acceleration is two meters per second per second says that my velocity is changing two meters per second every second or each second. Most of the time you'll see this unit written as meters per second squared um, because a meter divided by a second divided by another second, that's just meters over seconds times one over seconds. Um, these don't cancel, that's where you get the squared from, they multiply. So this unit, meters per second squared, is something that you might be familiar with from um, middle school physics or if you've experienced any sort of physics before. Um, this unit, most of the time people see this on um, the acceleration due to gravity, 10 meters per second squared. In your reading, you might have um, read about the sign of the acceleration. Acceleration can be positive or negative, so acceleration is a vector quantity, meaning it has direction, positive or negative. The idea that acceleration is positive does not always mean that an object is speeding up, just like if it, the acceleration is negative, it doesn't always mean that it's slowing down. Because if you think about, um, if you think about dropping something from a tall cliff, here's my cliff, here's my person, if I drop something, this object is going to accelerate in this direction. Now, when we're in physics, we always want to draw our coordinate system, um, which direction is positive. And in, in this class, I'm going to always make up be positive unless I have a really good reason to make um, down be positive. So if up is positive, then this object is speeding up in the downward direction or it's speeding up in the negative direction. The direction that it's speeding up in is the acceleration. So our acceleration is in the negative direction even though our velocity is getting faster. The velocity is getting bigger in the negative direction. So our velocity is becoming bigger and negative. So um, what would that look like? Here's our velocity versus time graph of this object. If my initial velocity is zero, I'm going to write this in red. My initial velocity is zero. The ball is traveling in the negative direction with constant acceleration, which means constant slope. That means that this ball will travel at a constant rate, straight line velocity, constant rate, where the velocity gets bigger and negative. So this velocity down here could be negative 20 meters per second. It's a faster speed, but if you think on a number line, it's actually a smaller number. It's very confusing. Um, so whenever I talk about um, velocity, like if it's getting bigger or smaller, usually I will substitute the idea for speed, and I will say that the speed is increasing in the negative direction. And that's how we get by the idea of like negative numbers are weird. 
When we talk about kinematic equations, um, most of the time the examples that I will use will be um, objects that are in free fall, meaning that they are only under the um, acceleration due to gravity or under the force of gravity. So um, th these equations could apply to cars speeding up and slowing down, but when objects are in free fall, we know for sure that the acceleration due to gravity is constant. Um, we can do some experiments to figure out what that acceleration due to gravity is. But if you think about gravity, we have this gravitational field that pulls things down. That gravitational field in the height that we really work with, that gravitational field is constant. And the gravitational field strength, g, little g, is, um, you'll hear people say 9.8. Uh, I'm just going to use 10 meters per second squared. Where do we get um, that? Well, that's, you know, from this. Okay. So um, if I was on top of a mountain, Earth is down here. If I was on top of the mountain, the gravitational field is going to be less than if I were down here um, because I'm closer to the Earth down here. So it's constant in the little bit of height that we typically work with, but if we're talking about that gravitational field over the course of mountaintops, um, that gravitational field isn't constant. So G is the gravitational field strength. A, or the acceleration due to gravity, is down, so we call down positive. We always need to set a coordinate system, so we'll call, sorry, down, not positive. We'll call down negative. So if down is negative, gravity pulls things down in the negative direction, so the acceleration is going to be negative. So the acceleration is negative g, or you could say it's equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. So g is always positive, it's acceleration that could be positive or negative, depending on your coordinate system.